Good day and thank you for joining us. So in today's lesson what we'll be looking at is straight line graphs, specifically number patterns and plotting. So the number patterns part, we'll just be revising our number patterns and then moving on to the table method in number patterns, just so that we can familiarize ourselves with the specific type of example that deals with these tables, which will help us with our plotting at the end of the day when it does come to straight line graphs. So let's look at the example here. So it says number pattern revision, okay? So we have this example that goes in the sequence 1, 3, 9, okay? So they say determine the general rule. So straight up, we're just going to write in our TN, which is going to be like our introduction to the equation or the rule. So TN, now we have to, de now we have to determine what is done to n okay so n is going to be each one of these terms so this will be n1 n2 n3 okay so let's just look at 1 as n what did we do to n to get to n2 we times it by 3 right but what do we do to t n2 to get to n3 we also times that by 3 so straight away we can confirm that we figured out the number pattern here okay so we can just write Sorry, I'm not sure what's happening with my pen. Let me just try and sort it out. Okay, cool. So, as soon as that happens now, we get Tn is equal to 3 times n. Okay? So, that will end up being our rule. Okay? So, that's all that it really takes to determine our rule. We just need to, to try and decipher what's happening in the number pattern so we can write out our rule. Now, moving on to this table over here. You can see they give us n, and they give us all of these different terms for n, right? So what's down to us to do is look at the next line here. So to figure out tn, is, so they give us a rule here to figure out the bottom. They say tn is equal to 2n plus 4, right? So this is the rule that we're going to use. As you can see, the first line of numbers that we were given were n. So to figure out tn, we need to substitute n into these equations, okay? So basically what I'm trying to say is the equation that's given to us is tn is equal to 2n plus 4. Now let's look at n1 that was given to us, right? The first n. So what's going to happen is we're just substituting in the place of n, the 1, right? Because remember, 1 is the first n value over here. And that's plus 4. So 2 times 1 gives us 2, plus 4 is going to give us 6, right? So that's how we're going to find out our first TN value. Then same for the second one. What's going to happen is, we're now just going to substitute in 2. So TN is equal to 2 times 2 plus 4. 2, plus 2 times 2 is going to give us 4, plus 4 is going to give us 8. So just like that, we find out our next term. And if we carry on, we're going to go 2 times 3 plus 4. So that's going to be 6 plus 4 is going to be 10. Now we can put that in. Then carrying on, what we're going to get now is 2 times 4 plus 4. So our final answer here is going to be 12. So you can basically see the general pattern that we're starting to pick up now. And once you start working out each one, you'll eventually get to these answers. So as you can see, the, there's a pattern that forms in the TN values as well. Okay, So the rule will determine what this pattern will be. In this case, we can see that each value increases by 2. Okay. So this example is just to basically show you how we're going to do the substitution to find the bottom row of numbers, okay? So keeping that in mind, let's move on. So we can see uh, we are starting off with our straight line graphs, okay? And first thing we're starting off with is our equation. So that is y is equal to mx plus c. So very two very important things to note, our m over here. That is our gradient, okay? Our gradient of our graph. And there's two important rules that you need to remember about our gradient. If our gradient is bigger than zero, 
then the graph is a so basically it will be our gradient is positive okay meaning that our graph our straight line graph will travel diagonally that way okay so it will travel towards the top right okay that is with a positive gradient but also if our gradient is less than zero so which means that our gradient is negative the direction our graph will travel in is opposite okay so you can see our positive gradient is heading in this direction and negative gradient is in that direction but you will see in our examples to come what um, how these directions look okay then looking at the C over here which is also an important thing that is going to be our y-intercept okay basically our y-intercept is the point on the graph at which the line crosses the y-axis that's why it is called the y-intercept okay so it's the place where the line intersects the y-axis so now that we've broken down this equation, basically this x and y is just going to be your x and y value that's on the graph, okay? And your x and y value is what we're going to end up working out here in this table. So without further ado, let's get into this table. It says y is equal to 2x plus 3. So as you can see, this, filled, this fits the shape or the form factor of this equation over here. Specifically because this is an equation of a straight line graph, okay? So... This straight line graph is going to help us to turn our x value that they've given us into our y value as well. So, because to plot a graph, we need an x and a y value. Cool? So, all we're going to do now is substitute in x into the equation, okay? So, we have y is equal to 2x plus 3, right? So, now we'll substitute in our first x value that's given to us. So, we'll have 2 minus 2 plus 3. Before we move on, very important thing I want to look out for is what is the gradient? The gradient here is greater than 0, right? Which means it's a positive gradient. So we know that the graph, if we had to plot it, would head in this direction. It's just very important to look out for these things so you can get used to spotting them and understanding them. Looking here at the C value, which is 3, so we know that the y-intercept is 3 on the y-axis of the graph, but you will see that when we start plotting it, okay? Now to finish off here, 2 times negative 2 gives us negative 4, plus 3 gives us negative 1. Now we do negative 1. So our final answer is going to give you positive 1. Give me three. Let me just check something quickly. Yeah, cool. So y is equal to two times one plus three again. So y is going to equal to two. Plus 3 gives me 5. And then we'll do y is equal to 2 times 2 plus 3. So that will give us a final answer of 7 over there. And so just like that, we found our plotting points, okay? And the way that I want you to write out these plotting points is write them as pairs, okay? So we have our x value and we have our y value. So basically what I'm saying is our pairs are negative 2 and negative 1. The next pair is negative 1 and positive 1. Next pair is 0 and 3. The next pair is 1 and 5. And the next pair is 2 and 7. And you can see the way that I'm writing it is in the form x and y. Because this is how coordinates are always written out, okay? With x on the left and y on the right. 
and these are going to help you plot your graph onto a Cartesian plane. So now that we know how to use the table to find out our points, let's find our points out in this example and then work on plotting them as well. And I apologize if my um, points aren't exactly spaced out evenly. Um, it's a bit hard to use a ruler on the tablet. So just bear with me just to make sure that your things are equal. So when you're measuring one centimeter, make it one centimeter between each point. Okay. It's really going to help and it is highly preferred. So looking here, the equation that's given to us is y is equal to 3x plus 1. Okay. So first thing we notice here is that the gradient is a positive gradient. Okay. So we know that our graph is going to head in a direction something like that. Okay. And then our y intercept, which is our c value, is positive 1. So we know that the graph will intercept at this y. If it does not, then our graph is wrong. Okay. So let's move on now. We're going to look at the graph of it, um, at the table, and we are going to substitute in quickly our terms. So we have negative two first plus one. Sorry. So three times a negative two is going to give me negative six plus one gives me negative five. Okay. So I have negative 5 there now. Then let's see if we put in 3 and negative 1 plus 1. So 3 times negative 1 gives me negative 3 plus 1 gives me negative 2. So we can plug that in. And if I'm going to substitute in 0, I'm going to get 3 times 0 gives me 0 plus 1 gives me positive 1. Okay. If I'm going to substitute in the 1, I get 3 times 1, excuse me, 3, plus 1 gives me 4. And if I'm going to plug in the 2, I'm going to get 3 times 2 gives me 6, plus 1 gives me 7. So now that we've worked out the table, let's do our pairs, okay? Remember, they are in the form x and then y. So we have x, then we have y, right? So that's our first plotting point. Then we have negative 1, and we have negative 2. Second plotting point. Our third plotting point is 0 and 1. Our fourth plotting point is 1 and 4. And our fifth one is 2 and 7. So now that we know the points that we are going to plot, now we are going to work through this systematically so that I can teach you, if you do not remember from last year, how to plot your points on the graph, the best way to do it, the one that's going to help you the most. So let's look at this. So we know that this is the x value first and the y value second, right? So looking at a negative 2 as our x value, let's find negative 2 on the graph in the x, okay? So to remember, this is the x axis and this is the y axis. So on the x axis, we'll look for the x and on the y axis, we'll look for the y. So the x is negative 2, right? And the y value is negative 5. So we found that on our graphs, on the x-axis here was negative 2, and the y-axis here was negative 5. So what we're going to do is try and meet them up, and that will tell us exactly where our point is, okay? And the way we do that is you'd use a ruler. I don't have a ruler right now. So I'm just going to work my way down, right? And from here you'd work across. And you can see the point where they cross over. This point is the point negative 2 and negative 5. So you can see how we found the points on the line. And the point at which they intersect each other, that will be the point that we are looking for, okay? So, same like we did with this one, we're going to do with negative 1 and negative 2. Here's our negative 1. Here's our negative 2. We're going to draw our lines. The point at which they intersect is here. So, this point over here is negative 1 and negative 2. It's not enough space on the left, so I'm just going to do it on the right here. 
Then our next point is 0 and 1. On the x-axis, this is 0 over here and this is 1. Okay. So what we're going to do is we just take the value that we're only taking the one that has a value. So we're going to leave the 0 because obviously that will leave us on the y-axis because x is 0 on the y-axis. Okay. And the y value is 1. So we'll just take the point here. And as you can remember, we identified that C was positive 1 and that would be the y-intercept. So this is the y-axis and the graph is intercepting the y-axis at positive 1, like the equation said. So we know that we're doing something right here. And as you can see, our points are heading up in this direction, which our gradient has determined that the graph would do so. So we know that straight away we are on the right track. Now let's do 1 and 4. So our x is 1 and our y is 4. So we're just going to hit this up. So at this point they cross. So that is our point 1 and 4. Then we need to do 2 and 7. x is 2. 7 is going to be somewhere up here. I don't have it on my Cartesian plane right now. But bear with me. So this will go up. Oops, sorry. It's supposed to come from 7, not 6. Just get my eraser for that. So you can see there, this method of plotting is really not that hard. Just takes a bit of practice. This one is 1 and 4 over here, and this one is 2 and 7. And as you can see, we have all of our points now. That's the first point, second point, the third point over there, which I'll just quickly identify as 0 and 1. So that's very important things that you have to know. Is that first, we need to find our point. Then we need to say which point it is. So next to the point, you have to write in that this one is negative 1 and negative 2. You have to write in that this was 2 and 7. Okay? So it's very important things that we have to remember. And then once you're done plotting your points, you need to draw your straight line. So now I'm not sure if mine's going to be straight now because I didn't use a ruler, but oh, it looks more or less straight. Okay, so we can see our straight line. Um, let me just use a different color just so it can stand out better. So it goes through all of the points that we've plotted to make our straight line, okay? So we can see that is our straight line over there. And it is following the rule of the gradient. We had a positive gradient, meaning that the line would travel in this direction. And it crossed over here at 0 and 1. C crossed over at 1 on the y-axis. So our y-intercept was indeed positive 1. So that's just a um, basic example of how we're going to be plotting our straight line graphs. And of course, if this gradient is negative, the graph would hit in this direction that way, okay? So, I really hope that this lesson was helpful and that you guys take something away from it. Thank you very much for joining us.